viewers and listeners. Greetings to all viewers and listeners. At this time, we have the opening prayer by Brother Lutz. Heavenly Father, we just ask that your presence will be with us as we present here from your scriptures, as we read your word. Father, we pray that those that will hear on their various devices on YouTube will be blessed and will be interested, be hungry to delve deeper into the subjects that, we, that are presented. Amen. Amen. Oops, very spirited prayer. Greetings to our viewers and listeners. This program is being brought to you by the Loving Heart Advent mm -hmm. Ministry. We pray that through our health message and our Bible presentation, that you can become aware of issues that confront us today and be empowered through the Holy Spirit to connect with Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray if you never had faith or even if you lost your faith, may our faith empowered program bring you closer to Christ and may your faith assist you through the empowered Holy Spirit to connect with Christ, our Lord and Savior, and be saved in his kingdom when he comes again. At this time, I'd like to present all members on today for our health feature, we have Brother Opang. He would be doing a very eye-opening message on beetroot. Also, we have for our Bible presentation, Brother Lutz and Brother Lee. And we pray that you would be blessed through our health feature. And our special music item will be brought to us by Sister Donna. At this time, I'd like to remind our viewers and listeners that we are here for you. If you need prayer for any issue, or if you'd like further information on our health feature and our Bible presentation, feel free to call us on 07951-745-0000. Or write to us at 30 Starry Towers, Adlerston, 8152NH. Now, we'll be blessed with our health feature by Brother Opang. Uh, good evening, viewers and listeners. And thank you for tuning in. Today, we are going to learn some of the health benefits that we get from eating beetroot. Um, as you know, beetroot is a vegetable that resembles turnips. Um, and uh, the scientific name for beetroot is beta vulgaris. And uh, it has the following properties. It is antioxidant, it is anti-inflammatory, it is anti-tumor, it is antihypertensive, and it is hypoglycemic. Amen. Anything anti followed by the name means that it fights against that disease. So antioxidant fights against free radicals that spoil our cells. So it improves the immune system or it boosts the immune system, as we say. Anti-inflammatory fights against any inflammation in the body, any inflammation in the cells, in the tissues, any kind of inflammation in the body. Anti-tumor, anyway, 
a tumor is a, a polite name for cancer. So any anti-tumor medication or property means it fights against um, uh, cancer. Anti-hypertensive explains itself. Hypertensive is hypertension. So anything anti is fighting against hypertension. And hypo means lower. Hypoglycemic means it lowers the blood sugar. So beetroot has got all these properties, mm -hmm. antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor, anti-hypertensive, and hypoglycemic. We've got different shades of uh, beetroot. We've got different types. We've got the Ethiopia, candy beet lane, uh, cane. We've got the golden, we've got the white, uh, we've got the formula, and then we've got the loose green leaf beetroot. These are all kinds of beetroot. But I know that in the UK, we only have the one with the red pigment, okay. And how is beetroot consumed? How do we take beetroot? If you go to the supermarkets, it, it, they are, it's a vegetable very close to turnips where you have the vegetables arranged. And it, it's unique because you can see it from its color alone. So it can be eaten in its natural form, raw, can be cooked, can be pickled, can be juiced uh, into smoothies and it's got this artificial coloring, uh, which they add to drinks, and it can be dried, sliced, dried, and eaten as chips. So we can eat beetroot from all the all these forms. And bitter cyanin. I was talking about the deep red color of uh, beetroot, which makes it unique to all the vegetables, and that pigment is called bitter signing. It is the pigment which gives the beetroot its deep red color. And bitter signing is a powerful antioxidant which fights against tumor is just a polite name for cancer. Bitter signing may particularly help prevent colon cancer, particularly. So it has got a very powerful anti-cancer uh, properties. And uh, let's see some of the uh, other health benefits. Um, beetroots are high in nitrates uh, to provide long lasting energy for enhanced cardiovascular health and exercise. And then it is loaded, beetroots are loaded with iron for proper oxygen transport and preventing iron deficiency anemia. We need iron to boost up the hemoglobin levels in our bodies so that enough oxygen can be transported through the body. And citrus contain another antioxidant called betalain, which protects our cells from damage and then also prevents cancer, just as the beta signing. And citrus contain vitamin A for proper eyesight and then eventually prevent uh, night blindness. Um, beetroots are high fiber for a healthy digestive system that prevents constipation, uh, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, and also reduces the risk of colon diseases. Beetroots are a great source of, of plant-based protein essential for the growth and development of all body tissues. We get protein from meat, we get protein from beans and other food sources. Beetroots are also plant, I have plant-based protein uh, for our growth. Um, it is loaded with folic acid, beetroot. And folic acid is required during pregnancy for the growth and development of embryos or newborn babies. At the same time, it's rich in calcium. Um, you know, calcium is a mineral necessary for the developing and maintaining strong bones and then preventing osteoporosis or weak bones. So imagine um, a pregnant woman taking beetroot in her diet. She's got folic acid, she got calcium, and she can get iron. Just for 
the growth of the baby. Amen. Um, it is anemia, it's lack of hemoglobin uh, in the body. And eventually that leads to low transportation of oxygen in the body. So you become weak, become tired when you, when you are anemic because there's not much oxygen flowing through the circulation. Beetroots contain potassium and potassium in beetroots helps the nerves and the muscles to function properly. And uh, the juice, after cooking the, uh, the raw beetroot, the juice is a natural remedy for sexual weakness and also it eliminates kidney or bladder stones, kidney or bladder stones. The only two places that we find stones in the body are from the kidney, the bladder, or from the gallbladder. So just drinking the juice uh, can prevent uh, these uh, um, ailments. Mm -hmm. And the father of medicines, Hippocrates, recommended the leaves, the leaves of the beetroots. So in the market, you can find the leaves attached to the, uh, the, 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 the vegetable. So he's saying that the leaves are good for healing stubborn wounds, stubborn wounds. Um, and the pigment or the red color is also used commercially for uh, as um, or Um, as food, food coloring, and they use the juice, which, 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 which color looks like beetroot. It has actually got some uh, coloring from beetroot. That is why I got that color. Now let me end up by by showing you the purple power juice or smoothies. Um, what you do is get some beetroot, either cooked or raw, get some carrots, um, a slice of apple, slice of pear, some lemon juice, some ginger, and then blend it all with a, power, with a powerful blender. Otherwise the blender will spoil. Get it um, blended into a smoothie and then store it in your fridge. And drink it morning, afternoon, evening, anytime the body to function properly. Um, so this evening, this is all I have for you about beetroot. If you have never tried eating beetroot, just go and try it. Start with the cooked ones, well packed, and then try it. You can use it in salads, you can eat it raw as it is. And remember, don't throw away the juice. It's, it's good for you. So that is all I have for you about beetroot. Deep, uh, beetroot. Next time, it may be something else. God bless you. Amen. And amen. That's a whole packed food we have there. Thanks for that very enriching and deep presentation. Truth, Brother Pong, anti inflammatory, antioxidant, a yeah. total food for pregnant women. It has iron, everything you need. And I can attest to beetroot. I see, I'm drinking beetroot. I can see my, my nails getting different and everything so beetroot is really really that powerful very perfect drink very very powerful. all i say man so thank you for and brother opong okay. let's see at this time we'll be blessed with your bible presentation we see the bible as god instructions before leaving earth Without the Bible, we live in darkness. In order to illuminate light in our lives, we need the instructions in the Bible. We will be studying the sacred scriptures. And today would be Brother Lutz and Brother Lee. And today our first question would be going to Brother Lutz. Brother Lutz. How were the scriptures given? Hello, everyone. It's great to be able to be with you here today. 
and yeah, to simply share from the from the Word of God. What we're going to look at now is really very simple to determine how actually do we approach the Bible. Do we treat the Bible as any other book? The question was how well the scripture is given and to determine an answer to that, we want to allow especially scripture to give, to give its own answer. And we want to start our journey in the second book of Timothy, chapter three and verse 16, where it reads that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. Now, that text is actually loaded with information, but I want to, for this presentation, focus, entire, focus here on the very first part of, the, of that verse, where it just says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, when we read that scripture is given, that, that really means for, for, that, that alone should tell us that the scriptures, the Bible is not of an internal source, is not self-created by people, but it has an external source, that the scripture is received from an outside source. Amen. And in this case, God. And if something is given, then actually that we have the Bible today is not accidental, but it's, a, it's an intentional act by God. To continue our journey to see more about what actually the Bible says about itself, I want us to look at what Peter writes in the second epistle, second Peter was one, uh, chapter one, verse 21. And it says that for the pro prophecy came not in all time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Again, we see that the prophecy or as spoke as they were moved, implying again outside in influence. In this case, actually the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. And as they were moved, it actually means as they were inspired. Now, who were those holy men of God, you might ask? For an answer to that, we simply need to turn to the book of Hebrews, the first chapter and the first verse, where it tells us that God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past, unto the fathers by the prophets. Amen. God used his prophets, a person called to do a special ministry, to communicate his will, his word to the people. God spoke by, or I should say through his prophets. That tells me that God is the author of the message. Amen. The, prophet, the prophet himself, however, is responsible for the faithful delivery of the same. Now let's have a look what one of the of one of these prophets, the prophet Jeremiah, in chapter two, and verses one and two himself is saying about this situation. And there we read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Amen. Now, Jeremiah, one of these prophets, makes it actually very clear here, and actually, on, on, only the first verse, what, that the message that he wants to give to the people came to him from God. 
it is not his by his, his design. He did not choose to give this message. And he actually then makes it more abundantly clear, really, in, in verse two, when he, he says, he wants to say to the people, thus says the Lord, this is what, what, what God said. Then we, we, we there see the prophet is the one who delivers the message. But Amen. God, is, God is the source of that message. Amen. God is not only the source of, of, of messages, but when we, when we look at what David said about himself, David the one who is responsible for penning the majority of the Psalms, songs of praises, to God, what he is saying in the second book of Samuel, chapter 23 and verse 2. It says, the spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Amen. That reminds me, by the way, very strongly of what Paul writes about prayer in Romans 8.26, when it says that we do not need to know what to pray for, but that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Amen. And actually, the, David, David says here that in the composing of, of, of his praises, that the Holy Ghost, God himself was deeply involved in praising and bringing those praises. When writing the Psalms, David did so with the guidance or inspiration of the Holy Ghost. What an amazing thing that actually we see that even in writing down proper praises to, to, about himself, God was involved in, in the creation of uh, thereof. So then when, when we think of all this, then how, how should we then actually really approach the Bible? What should, how should we deal with it as it lies before us? And I'm thinking a good answer to that, to that question is actually given in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, where Paul is writing to the, to the church of Thessalonica. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, he received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which Amen. affects the workers also in you that believe. Paul speaks of the situation that he was in, 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 in Thessalonica, speaking about the gospel, about the great work of Jesus for us. And even ah. though he spoke, the people received it as the true message of God. As it, as it indeed was. Amen. We read in our first verse that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So really, we can only say and, and, and end this discourse with this. The Bible is the literal word of God. Written by people, for people, so that it speaks to people. The message itself, however, comes from God alone. So it's my appeal to you, to all of us. As you open the Bible with us, do not treat it similar to various self-help books, oh. books or, or as a book of philosophy. Something that you can argue with to take on the, the, the portions you like and discard the others. Really, the whole Bible, from the first to the last verse, is God's love letter to you. Please receive it as such. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lutz, for that very enriching and empowering message about God's word. We can take away from what Brother Lutz said. It is the word of God. It is not from no. man. All it was given was inspired. It cannot be seen as philosophy or as a novel. 
Come, or come. something to argue with. It is light for us to lead us to, to God. Amen. So thank you once. What do you mean? Come, come, yeah. come, come. That yeah. book. It's God's yeah. instruction to man. No, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an agony. Time. Our next question would be going to Brother Lee. Brother Lee. Sorry, by what name did Jesus refer to the sacred writings of the Old Testament, the Bible of his day, and who were they speaking of? Thank you for the question, Sister Jerry, and uh, good evening, listeners. The answer to that question comes from uh, Matthew 21 and verse 42. I'll read what Jesus said, and then I'll go on to some other, some things leading up to that question. Here in, Matt, in, in Matthew 21 and verse 42, Jesus said unto them, did he never read in the scriptures? So Jesus referred to the, the sacred writings as the scriptures, which was the, the, which was the Bible of his, well, the scriptures, or the, the Old Testament writings with the Bible of his day. Okay, continue to say. So the scriptures says, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Why did Amen. Jesus, why did Jesus um, ask this question? Now, firstly, Jesus came to Jerusalem and he was in the temple. And I, I go back to verse 23 of Matthew 21. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the temple came unto him as he was teaching and said, by what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus began to speak to them in, in, in parables. And um, we find there also in that verse, uh, verse 42, about the stone, which refers to himself uh, in um, verse 15 of Matthew 21. It says there, and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful thing that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, yeah, the son of David, was so So that is the beginning of, of the rejection of Jesus. Uh, for, for poison. So back to the in um, 21. So Jesus. Yeah responded, uh, we we'll asked them a question through a parable he gave them about the husbandman yes. and, and, and so forth. You can read that um, for your own uh, edification, Matthew 21, um, from verse 1 to 42 and onwards. And, and here, get the gist of what the question was all about and the answer Jesus gave. So the stone is rejected himself. Now in John 5, 39, Jesus makes it clear that the scriptures testify of him. John Amen. 5, 39, he says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, for they are they which testify of me. Amen. All right? So Jesus said the scriptures testify of him. Now, where was Jesus quoting from in, in um, Matthew 21? Verse 42. Of course, as I said, you it's hit by the old testament writings. Hey. And so in Psalm, here we find Jesus was quoting hey. from the Psalm 118. Get me and one in there. And here Jesus it, it says here in the Psalm, the stone which the builders refuse is become the stone. head of the stone of the corner. This is the Lord doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. So they reject, which they refuse. 
is become the chief cornerstone. And um, we go over into uh, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 3. And it says here, uh, he, referring to Jesus, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteem him not. Amen. Jesus was, Jesus was despised and rejected. The chief cornerstone, the one who came to set us free from the burden of sin, the one who came and healed, as, as we read in Matthew 21, um, verse 42, he was, he was in the temple. What was he doing? Healing, teaching, and doing all manner of good. Yet the chief priest and elders of the temple did not like what he was doing. And um, so we find that Jesus Thank you. was rejected for his good works, for his stern rebuke at times to them, for his, um, you see, the, the, the Jews expected Jesus to come dressed in purple robe and crown and all that thing. You know, lead an army. When they found out that he was not doing that, he, 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 he said, that's not what he came for. But he came to set the sinner free. Amen. Like that. They rejected that and they rejected him. As a, and, and eventually, did you get that? Died. Did he have to pay for it? No idea. Listen oh, he up. did. Just as they rejected that's Jesus. Are you still rejecting Jesus today? Jesus says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Listen, accept what he says and accept him because all he wants to do for you is good. He wants to save you. May God bless you. I, I told you, I looked for it then. And I said, I, I, I don't have any money. Oh, cost? I mean, you, you know, I said anything. I just Are you opening? Give me a packet. No, I don't know. I don't know. Popes about Jesus. The sacred scriptures is all about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's the same scripture that was in the Old Testament, the same scripture we have today. And that was very, very edifying and empowering message from Brother Lee. I pray our viewers have been blessed and that our Bible presentation would assist them to connect with Christ, our Lord and Savior, through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So thanks each and everyone for the Bible presentation this evening. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to remind our viewers that we are here for you. If you need prayer for any issue, or if, if you need more information on our health feature and our Bible presentation, please feel free to write to us at 30 Surrey Towers, Addiston, KT152NH. This now brings our program to a close. So we want to thank our viewers and listeners once again for being part of our program. And to bring our prayer program to a clear, we'll now to a close, we'll now have prayer. Let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you one more time that we can come together to tell others of your love and your goodness through your sacred words and also empower them through the sacred scriptures and the health presentation. We pray that our viewers and listeners have been equipped and empowered to make the right choices, to connect with Christ our Lord and Savior and be saved in his kingdom when he come again. We pray that you forgive us where we have erred in the past. Help us to surrender all to you, Father. And even all of us who are presenting that we all 
would connect with you, continue to have that great relationship and be saved in your kingdom. This is my humble prayer in no other name, but the worthy name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. 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 Once again, we'd like to thank our viewers for listening and viewing. And we pray that by God's grace, you keep tuning in and being blessed through our Faith Empowered program. Goodbye. God bless. Okay, the program is finished, Brother Ronnie. Yes. <clears throat> what? Dana wasn't able to sing today because oh. of...